Okay, everybody, this is Moody Dashcam. We are in Cove Neck, Long Island right now. Hear that plane overhead? It's pretty fitting because we're gonna be going to the site of where a plane crashed right over here at 13 Tennis Court Road. I'll add all the pictures, of course. This wasn't a regular little plane you're thinking of. This is a Boeing 707, 158 passengers, right in the woods in someone's backyard. All right, let's get into it. All right, we are actually, oh, windows up. We're actually very close to the site of where this plane crashed. The reason why this plane crashed was it was because it was coming from Colombia, the capital of Colombia. It stopped in Medellin for a little bit. Hear the accent there? Stopped there and um, picked up a few passengers and got more fuel. Then continue on, it was gonna stop at JFK. I'll add where JFK is in comparison to where we are now. But, um, so it did that and on the east coast of the US, there was a lot of storms, a lot of rain, a lot of fog, especially in New York. So flights were being delayed, flights were kept in the air, it was unsafe landing conditions. And to add to that, the flight also had a failed attempt at landing. So it got close to the um, runway and took back off, which chews up a lot of fuel. Now, they're told many times to keep diverting, keep staying in the air, and they never really relayed to the air traffic control that how low of fuel they were at, which if they did, they would have been put on priority and they would have been able to land. So they're sent on this long route to loop around and they end up losing two engines. I think they report that they lose two engines at um, uh, 9.32 p.m. This happened on January 25th, 1990. So 9.32 p.m. I believe was the last communication they had with air traffic control. And then the passengers literally had no idea what was going on during the situation. They weren't let in on it. They knew there was delays. They were kept in the in the air for extra long. Now, normally a flight, this is what I'm learning from doing research on this. Normally a flight uh, has about a half an hour extra fuel for delays like this. They were delayed an hour and a half extra, which is crazy. Now, you didn't think parts of uh, Long Island and New York look like this, right? We're gonna be passing on the left, 13 Tennis Court Road. That is where John McEnroe's house was, famous tennis player. It's a beautiful house. They used this, oh no, we're on private property, everyone. They used this house to the left here, which I'll get a good look of. I'm a resident, you guys don't know? I have a house name. This is the kind of area that we're in right now. Okay. I'll, I'll add some pictures of this house, this property. Pool, tennis court, everything you'd ever want. Guest house, cottage. So yeah, they actually, first responders use this house as a little like command center kind of. And then this house right here, which is 16 Tennis Court Road, the Tissenbaums lived here. The plane crashed pretty much right where, right where this Children at Play sign is, if you could see that, is where the plane went down. I'm going to get out here and walk through the woods a little bit. Why not? Say hi to the truck. Dirty, nice and dirty. We had a snowstorm. So right here is where the plane crashed. I'll add all the pictures. It's a really crazy thing. Like I said, it's not a little... Um, two-person plane that we're talking about here it is a serious a plane that you would take like if you're on a vacation or traveling and the woman in this house they're in their 70s 
You can see we have a lot of air traffic here. The woman that lived in this house with her husband was in the shower at the time and she thought it was like a loud thunder. But no, it was a plane crashing. I wanna, I wanna get up here a little bit. I'm wearing boots, but uh, they're not really meant for this. And as you guys know, I have a house here, so I'm allowed to do this. Did I toss my phone into the snow? Yes. Do I care? Not really. So this right here is where the plane crashed. Destroyed a little bit of their property. It went across this road. I believe it damaged the cars crossing this road. Can we get down without getting hurt now? So I'm pretty high, I'm about 20 feet up right now. In a, in dress boots. Bad choice of uh, footwear. Hmm. We're gonna slide, everybody. You think I could slide down this? I'm gonna sit on my ass and slide. Seamless. Seamless. Now that I'm all wet and dirty. Oh. Okay, time to turn around. I'm back down this driveway, because why not? So, to give a little bit of details about what exactly happened here, 73 people were killed, 85 people were injured, there were 158 people on board. This happened at about 9.34 p.m. Like I said, it was a Boeing 707. Two people on the plane were actually drug mules that had cocaine. One went to uh, Nassau Medical Center and they had 14 condoms filled with cocaine that he passed in the bathroom. And then another guy had about a pound of cocaine in his body. They found that when they did surgery on him. They didn't want to actually continue with the surgery because they feared they would cut the cocaine open and give him a fatal overdose uh, on the table. Jose Figueroa was the guy that they found uh, the over a pound in him. He was 31 years old. He ended up getting seven years uh, in jail. 
then the other guy was Antonio Zaluga, 46 years old. He got six years to life. Jose Figueroa was in uh, North Shore Medical University Hospital in Manhasset. They got paid at the time around a thousand, five hundred to a thousand dollars for each run. So I don't really think that's worth it, but. Like I said, there was a lot of rain and fog around. First responders were doing everything they could to save people. There were eight children on the flight. A few of them were actually coming here because they got adopted by uh, families in the US. Um, firemen and paramedics were using branches as makeshift splints to set uh, broken arms and broken legs. They're using tree limbs to hook IVs onto to um, give to patients as they're pretty in the field. Uh, there was a guy who was a medical technician who rushed out of his practice in Huntington in jeans and his scrub shirt and put together like a triage kit and helped a lot with uh, stopping people from bleeding. He was one of the first people on the scene. It was a really big effort to help as many people as possible. Uh, one person said there was a pair of severed feet, 10 rows above, totally alone. And uh, I'm assuming that person probably died, but who knows? Really tragic accident that if you read into it, seems like it almost could have been avoided if more communication was went back and forth between the air traffic controller and the people on the flight. So it's a sad story overall. And I guess don't traffic drugs when there's going to be a bad flying condition so stupid really tragic accident that happened um, a lot of people that died but a lot of people were saved due to the efforts of all the first responders in the area which was nice um, moral of the story if you're going to traffic drugs don't be on a plane that crashes <laughs> so stupid